Running in the mountains is a bit different. The terrain is different. The view is different. The spectators are different. The weather is different. And reaching the start can be a challenge in itself. It took me a plane ride, a couple of trains, a bus and a cable car to get to the village of Melchseefrut in Switzerland, where the next day I would start a 44 kilometer long trail run. After collecting my race number, I sat down on a bench and reviewed the course, both on the map and on the horizon. Then I hiked my way up to the Berghotel Bonistock, where I would spend the night. The weather soon started to look less than optimal. But along with a great dinner, the hosts served a lovely weather forecast. The rain would disappear during the night. And indeed, it did. When I opened the drapes the next morning and saw the sun play with the landscape, I felt as if half of the effort was already done. Full of excitement, I made my way back down to Merxeefrut and lined up in the smallest starting zone I've ever seen. The trail started with an easy ascent, but in the slightly thinner air at 2000 meters above sea level, it took me a bit longer than usual to find a good rhythm. At that point, it occurred to me that this race might be more difficult than I had expected. But even then, I couldn't imagine the full extent of what I was getting into. After five easy kilometers, I reached the first significant ascent. I power hiked up the steepest part and then found myself on a narrow ridge with spectacular views. It had some steep parts and some difficult terrain, but often I could switch back from hiking to running. And whenever I was running, with the terrain dropping steeply on both sides and the lazy clouds brushing the ridge, I felt like I was flying. I didn't think about the challenges to come or the pace I was doing. I just soaked up the atmosphere. And so should you. Thirteen kilometers in, I was back down from the ridge and at the foot of the biggest ascent. Soon after starting it, the clouds engulfed me. The runners in front and behind me disappeared into the mist. In these circumstances, it was always a relief when I spotted a green on white sign that proved that I was still on track, or a few volunteers amongst the cows to show me the way. Alone in the fog, on a ridiculously steep trail, no idea how far from the top. Not the easiest circumstances. After what felt like an eternity, the trail got flatter and I reached the ridge. It seemed like I had just about completed the ascent. Then, some more mountain broke through the fog. When I finally reached the top, the fog was so dense that I had to ask the people there if I was in fact on the summit. Imagine my relief when they said yes. That relief, however, was a bit premature. The first part of the descent was so technical that it didn't go much faster than the essence. It wasn't just that the trail was steep and slippery, also you really, really did not want to fall into the misty abyss. Then the trail got a bit easier. I picked up the pace and looked forward to breaking through the cloud base again. That didn't happen. When I completed the first of two loops, the village of Melchseefrut was covered in a thick fog. And so I reached the finish line of the first half, after three hours and 20 minutes. As soon as I set out on the second loop, I was once more alone in the fog. The wet wind was so cold that at one point I put on gloves. 
but mostly the mental aspect was brutal. I wasn't sure where I was. I worried about taking a wrong turn. I couldn't set short-term goals or look back at what I had already accomplished. During the whole of the most difficult ascent of the second loop, I could occasionally hear the click-clack of running poles somewhere behind me in the fog. But it was only just before the top that the runners attached to those poles came into view. It felt wonderful to have runners right in front of me again, even though they had just overtaken me. Better still, the fog had cleared a bit, and the trail was getting less technical. Even though by this point I had already exceeded my longest previous run by an hour, and I didn't feel like I had any energy left, I was picking up the pace. The non-technical trail was just too beautiful not to run at speed. The last of the few aid stations I passed as if I was running a street race. I gulped down one cup and ran on. I still had a good rhythm, but I feared that if I stopped for a second, I would not be able to get going again. I was so intent on keeping the rhythm that when it started to rain, I waited until I was near hypothermic to dig my jacket out of my backpack. After that, I needed all of my sugar-depraved mind to convince my legs to start moving again. Somehow, I still had a presence of mind to realize that my camera is not waterproof and put it in my pocket. I did not, however, have the presence of mind to close my pocket. And gone was the camera. Amazingly, my camera was found afterwards and returned to me. Otherwise, you wouldn't be watching this. I did miss out on filming the finish, though. But I don't care. When I think back on this race, I don't think about the finish. I think about the amazing views in the beginning before the clouds rolled in. I think about the brutal climbs and the technical descents. I think about the loneliness in the fog and the bite of the wind and rain. I don't think about the finish. I think about what it took to get there. A good trail run is like a memorable holiday or a happy life. The journey is more important than the destination.